This is IBM, the Islamic Broadcasting Network. The following program is sponsored by the Islamic Media Foundation, sharing the guidance of Allah through broadcast media and the Internet. Put all our pride away. Always thank Allah when we pray. You know we shouldn't be full of ourselves when we should be full of humility. La, la, this la, is la, la, the Muslim ID. La, 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 you know we shouldn't fool ourselves. Allah has given so much to you and me. La, 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 With your host, Suhaib Asayid. Shouldn't be full of ourselves when we should be full of humility. Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you, and welcome to the Muslim ID. I'm your host, Suhaib al Sayyid. All praise is due to Allah, the Creator, Cherisher, and Sustainer of the universe. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, glory be to Him. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon Him, is his last and final messenger. May the peace, blessings, and mercy of Allah be upon him, his companions, and those who follow his path until the day of judgment. We continue today our journey, our journey to the Muslim ID. Our most recent station on our journey was the station of al ittiba or following the example of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Today we move on to make another stop on our journey to the Muslim ID, our station istiqama or uprightness. In the Arabic language, the root word from which istiqama is derived refers to uprightness and correctness. It can also be used to refer to the value of an item. The root can also be used to mean justice and moderation. Istiqama also refers to being steadfast and holding strongly to something. We find that in the Quran, Allah, glory be to him, uses the root word to refer to these and various other meanings. Thus we read in the Qur'an, So stand true to him and ask for his forgiveness. Here Allah uses the word to mean turning towards him alone as the only Lord worthy of worship. In terms of the reference to justice, Allah says, characterizing the believers, Those who when they spend are not extravagant and not miserly, but hold a just balance between those two extremes. Uprightness means following the straight path and the guidance that leads to it, without deviating right or left. This includes submitting to the commandments of Allah, whether in external or internal matters, and avoiding all his prohibitions as well. Uprightness means fulfilling all promises and pursuing the straight path in all matters pertaining to life or to faith, by seeking moderation, whether in food, drink, or clothing, as well as in matters dealing with faith. Uprightness is the opposite of deviation and divergence, whereby the servant seeks to remain on the straight path, submitting to his Creator, and pursuing the path of servitude to Allah through the guidance of the teachings of his faith, as well as sound reasoning. Allah says, Those who say, Our Lord is Allah, and further stand straight and steadfast, the angels descend on them, saying, Do not fear nor grieve, but receive the glad tidings of the garden of bliss, which you were promised. Here Allah is referring to those who obey Him and follow the guidance of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The great scholar al Mawirdi offered several interpretations for istiqamah, as used in this verse. He says that uprightness here refers to their faith in the oneness of Allah and His worthiness alone of being worshipped. Another interpretation is that they were upright in their obedience to Allah and in their fulfillment of their obligations towards Him. He also says that uprightness here could mean sincerity in faith and actions. Furthermore, it could mean that they are upright in their words as well as in their actions. Finally, he says that uprightness here could mean 
that their private lives, the lives of the believers in private, became just as good, if not better, than their public lives. Allah, glory be to him, reserved for himself the name Al-Qayyum. In his right, this name means the one who stands by himself, needing none other than himself. He has no need for others, and everyone and everything else needs him. For nothing can possibly exist without his existence and his sustenance. In other words, this name means that Allah is eternal, having no end. He is also the guardian over all matters, caring for them and maintaining them as he wishes. The great scholar Ibn al-Qayyim wrote extensively about uprightness and its importance in the life of the believer. He said that uprightness essentially means holding firmly to the straight path. What uprightness means in terms of the servant's actions is striving towards the best. In other words, you're not expected, let alone required, to perfect your actions, but you're expected and required to strive to do your best. Thus we find the hadith or saying in which the Prophet peace be upon him said, Strive as much as you can towards the best, and know that none of you shall be saved by his actions. The companions, may Allah be pleased with them, asked him, Not even you, O Messenger of Allah? He replied, Not even me, unless Allah showers me with his mercy and bounty. Here the Prophet peace be upon him clearly directed us to strive our best, but to keep in mind that our actions, no matter how great, will never be sufficient in themselves to save us from the punishment of the hereafter. We must continuously strive to improve ourselves and to aim for the highest levels of uprightness and commitment. It has been said in the past that uprightness is as vital to the human status and condition as the soul is vital to the body. If a body lacks a soul, it is lifeless and motionless. Similarly, if your condition and status and way of life lacks uprightness, it is worthless and decayed. Ibn al-Qayyim then adds a very important point to our understanding of uprightness, saying, Whoever holds firmly to the straight path in this life and is upright, he shall be granted firmness and uprightness in the hereafter as he crosses the straight path towards paradise. And the degree of firmness and uprightness in the hereafter will be proportional to the degree of firmness and uprightness in this life. He then adds, Every servant should look around him and see how strong the temptations around him are and how distracted he feels by them. The temptations and the distractions in the hereafter which will pull him away or attempt to pull him away from the straight path and into hellfire will be just as strong as those he faces in this life. The more upright he is in this life, the more he resists the attractions that may divert him from the straight path, the more likely he is to successfully traverse the straight path in the hereafter and make it safely to paradise. You're listening to the Muslim ID on IBN, the Islamic Broadcasting Network. When we come back, we'll take a look at some examples of how uprightness should always be a part of our lives as we seek to understand the Muslim ID. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't forget, you can always listen to IBN on the Internet at www.ibn.net every weekday from 2 p.m., to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, that's www.ibn.net. IBN, the voice of American Muslims. The following is NBA star Hakeem Olajuwon. If we live within the boundaries of one race, one culture, one way of doing things, we limit our ability to understand the wisdom we can learn from each other. Our ethnic and cultural diversity is a blessing that teaches us that it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. It's the goodness in your heart that makes the difference. This message is brought to you by your American Muslim neighbors. 
This public service announcement is brought to you by the Islamic Media Foundation. Always find a gentle word to say, you know we shouldn't fool ourselves. Allah has given so much to you and me. Welcome back to the Muslim ID on IBN, the Islamic Broadcasting Network. I'm your host, Sahib Sayyid. The Prophet, peace be upon him, guided his companions. May Allah be pleased with them and all those who came to follow their example afterwards to the necessity of being upright and firm in faith. And he also warned against deviation and divergence from the straight path. One day, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, planned to travel somewhere. He went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, give me some advice for my trip. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Worship Allah, and do not associate partners with him. Mu'ath said, O Messenger of Allah, give me more advice. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If you mistreat someone, then correct your mistake by doing good. Once again, Mu'ath said, O Messenger of Allah, give me more advice. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Be upright and have good manners. Prophet peace be upon him explained to his companions in clear terms what uprightness means and how one should strive to be firm in his faith. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Prophet peace be upon him once drew a line for us in the sand and said, This is the path of Allah. He then drew other smaller lines branching from this straight line and he said to us, These are various divergent paths. A devil stands upon each deviant path, inviting people towards it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then recited the verse, saying, Indeed, this is my straight path, so follow it, and do not follow the other paths, lest they divert you from his path, meaning the path of Allah. A man once came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, direct me towards an action, that will bring me closer to paradise and further me from hellfire. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Worship Allah and do not associate partners with him. Establish prayers, give the alms, and connect your kin. When the man had left, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to his companions, If he is upright in fulfilling what he has been commanded, he shall enter paradise. Qais ibn Ubadah, may Allah be pleased with him, was once sitting in the mosque of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in Medina. A man entered the mosque and began to pray. Some people who were sitting in the mosque whispered to each other, saying, This is a man who shall enter paradise. The man finished his prayer and walked out of the mosque. Qais quickly followed the man and said to him, When you entered the mosque, some people said, This is a man who shall enter paradise. The man looked at Qais and said, People shouldn't say what they don't know. But let me tell you something. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, was still alive, I saw a dream in which it seemed that I was in a garden. In the middle of this garden, there was a long vertical iron pole extending from the ground to the sky. At the top of the pole, I could see that there was a firm knot. I was told, climb the pole. I responded, I can't. Then someone came and helped me, and I climbed the pole and held on to the knot. Then I heard a voice saying, be steadfast and upright. When I woke up, I narrated the dream to the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said to me, the garden is Islam. The pole is the straight path of Islam and the knot is the firmest position of faith. Then he said, You shall be on the straight path of Islam until you die. The companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, took the issue of uprightness and firmness on the path of truth very seriously, and they made it a point to strive to be upright to the maximum possible extent. The second caliph, Omar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, once stood to address the people, and he said, O people, obey me so long as I obey Allah. But if I disobey Allah, 
then you have no obligation to obey me. At this point, a man who was sitting stood up and said, By Allah, if we find any deviation in you, we shall straighten you up with our swords. Umar was pleased with what the man had said, and he replied, All praise is due to Allah, who has brought about from the followers of Muhammad, peace be upon him, those who will straighten the deviations of Umar. Can you imagine to what degree and extent these companions went to ensure that they were following the straight path and that they were upright in their actions? This wasn't just one of the closest companions to the Prophet, peace be upon him. He was the caliph, charged with the affairs of the entire Muslim nation. Yet he stood to set the standards clear. So long as I'm upright on the path of righteousness, you're obliged to obey me. Otherwise, correct my mistakes, even if you need to resort to force. In addition to directing his companions to be upright in their faith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, warned them against factors that may instill some doubt or confusion in their minds about their faith. One day, the Prophet, peace be upon him, say, saw Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, reading some verses from the texts of, of the people of the book. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was displeased with Umar. And he said, Are you confused, O Umar? By Allah, I have brought you the pure guidance. Do not ask them about matters, lest they tell you some truth and you reject it, or they tell you falsehood and you believe it. By Allah, had Musa, or Moses, peace be upon him, been alive, he would have followed me. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also drew an analogy to clarify in our minds the nature of the straight path and uprightness and firmness upon it. He said, Allah has set forth a parable, a straight path on the sides of which are two walls. Each wall has several open doors, and upon each door is a loose curtain. At the entrance to the straight path, someone calls out, saying, O people, enter the straight path and do not look around you. Along the straight path is another person. Whenever a human being tries to open one of these side doors and look behind it, this person calls out, Be careful. Don't open this side door, because if you open it, you shall be attracted by what you see, and you shall deviate from the straight path. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then said, explaining, The straight path is Islam. The two walls on the sides of this straight path are the limits set forth by Allah. The caller who stands at the entrance to the straight path is the book of Allah, inviting people to the straight path. And the caller inside the straight path is the conscience which Allah has placed in the heart of every believer. In this very explicit analogy, the Prophet, peace be upon him, drew the meanings closer to our minds. A person may be on the straight path, but the temptations are abundant both on the right and the left. The challenge is to stay focused and to be upright in your commitment to the straight path and your firmness in abiding by it. Then, you must also realize that as these temptations call out to you, there is a conscience from within, from within you, that encourages you to resist and to remain firm on the straight path. And you should always allow that conscience to win and never let the temptations overcome that conscience. That conscience is what brings you back to your senses, what shows you, clarifies for you the straight path, gives you the strength to continue to be upright and to avoid from deviation. You're listening to the Muslim ID on IBN, the Islamic Broadcasting Network. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Support IBN by making a pledge today, a dollar a day. To the Islamic Media Foundation, help IBN programs to continue by making your monthly contribution today. Pledge a dollar a day online at www.ibn.net or call us to pledge over the phone at 703-241-9659. Help us continue to be your voice, the voice 
of American Muslims. You know we shouldn't be full of ourselves when we should be full of humility. Welcome back to the Muslim ID on IBN, the Islamic Broadcasting Network. I'm your host, Sahib al Sayyid. It's quite amazing when one reads the verses of the Quran to realize the extent to which uprightness is emphasized. In fact, istiqamah or uprightness is so important that Allah mentions it in the first chapter of the Quran, Al Fatiha, or the opening. And Allah made this chapter an essential part of prayer mandating that it be recited in each unit of prayer. In this chapter, Allah directs us in our prayer to Him to say, Guide us to the straight path. In other words, Allah is telling us that the overall purpose of our life is to become upright on the path He has chosen for us. Our goal should be to strive to hold firmly to His guidance and to steer away from His prohibitions. Thus it is that at least 17 times a day, as the person performs his five daily prayers, the servant pleads with his Creator to help him in his struggle to be upright on the straight path. And Allah commands the Prophet, peace be upon him, as well as humanity at large, to be upright in faith and obedience. He says, Therefore, stand firm in the straight path as you are commanded, you and those with you who have turned towards Allah, and do not transgress from the path, for He sees well all what you do. Allah also warns us in the Qur'an that Satan has recognized how vital the straight path is to the success of the human being, and he's directed all his efforts and energy towards dragging mankind away from the straight path. Thus, when Allah kicked Satan out of paradise, for his disobedience and refusal to accept Allah's commandments. Allah tells us that Satan responded, Because you, meaning Allah, have misguided me, I will sit and wait for them on the straight path. Then I will assault them from before them and behind them, from their right and their left, and you will not find most of them grateful for your bounties. So the greatest thing that bothers Satan is that Allah has clarified for us the straight path. And just as He has been set to suffer the punishment of hellfire for eternity, He wants to drag all of humanity with Him. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, once said, As man rises every morning, his limbs submit to his tongue, saying, Fear Allah when using us. If you're upright and steadfast, we shall be upright and steadfast. And if you are deviant, we shall be deviant as well. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also warned us against deviation, telling us that as the day of judgment draws near, there will be many ripe opportunities for deviation. In a saying narrated by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Indeed, the people of the book before you split into 72 groups, and this nation shall split into 73. 72 groups will be in hellfire, and only one shall enter paradise. Here the Prophet, peace be upon him, clearly warns us against trends and ideologies that may creep into our faith and understanding of Islam, turning us away from the straight path and rendering us deviant. The struggle is for you to strive continuously to sustain yourself on the path of righteousness and to be upright. In addition to encouraging us to be upright, the Prophet, peace be upon him, also enticed us to invite others to the straight path and to encourage them to be upright on the path of truth. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrates that the Prophet, peace be upon him, once said, Whoever invites people to the guidance, he shall receive a reward equivalent to that of whoever follows his example without reducing from their rewards. And whoever invites to deviance, he shall receive a punishment equivalent to that of whoever follows his example without reducing from their punishments. In other words, anyone who sets a good example, 
he shall be rewarded not only for setting the good example, but for whoever follows that good example after him. Similarly, whoever sets a bad example, he shall be punished not only for setting the bad example, but for those who follow him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also taught us how one can attain uprightness and firmness in faith. Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, once said, No servant's faith shall be upright and steadfast until his heart becomes upright and steadfast. And his heart shall not be upright and steadfast until his tongue is upright and steadfast. And no man shall enter paradise if his neighbor is not safe from his harm. In countless verses of the Qur'an, Allah draws our attention to the fact that the message of submission to Him is the same message that all prophets and messengers preached, beginning with Adam, peace be upon him, and finally concluding with Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Allah tells us that all these prophets and messengers constantly reminded their people to stick to the straight path and to be upright and firm on it. In many of these verses, these prophets and messengers clearly say to their people, This is the straight path. The companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, realized that the uprightness of one individual can be a very important factor, leading others to be upright as well. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, once saw a woman during the season of Hajj, or pilgrimage, who would not talk to anyone. He asked some people, why doesn't she talk? They said, she has vowed to perform her, her pilgrimage without saying a word. Abu Bakr said to the woman, talk because what you're doing is not permissible. The woman said, Who are you? Abu Bakr responded, I am from those who migrated with the Prophet, peace be upon him, from Mecca to Medina. She asked, Which of those who migrated? He answered, From the tribe of Quraysh. She said, Who amongst Quraysh are you? Abu Bakr responded, I am Abu Bakr. The woman asked him, what can guarantee for us that we shall remain upright on this righteous matter to which Allah has guided us? He responded, You shall remain upright so long as your leaders are upright. Indeed, uprightness is an important characteristic for the believer to have. It's a sign of complete faith. It carries you to the highest levels. It grants you the trust of people. It's a reflection of Allah's pleasure upon you. And it's a vital trait on the path to the Muslim ID. This was yet another stop on our journey to the Muslim ID. A brief tour through the world of istiqamah, or uprightness. Before we continue and leave this station, let us strive to be upright in our faith and to strengthen it with all possible ways to protect ourselves from deviance. Please join me every Wednesday for a new stop on our journey to the Muslim ID here on IBN, the Islamic Broadcasting Network. If you have any questions or comments about the Muslim ID, feel free to email me at muslimid at ibn.net. Until next time, I'm Suhaib al-Sayyid. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. Put all our pride away Always find a gentle word to say You know we shouldn't fool ourselves Allah has given so much to you and me Put all our pride away Always thank Allah when we pray You know we shouldn't be full of ourselves When we should be full of humility oh, we're all living This program has been sponsored by The Islamic Media Foundation Sharing the guidance of Allah Through broadcast media and the internet